Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update for pro members. Actually recording this on the morning of Sunday, April 11th. So a little delayed this weekend compared to normal. So sorry about that. But let's jump into it, starting with just taking a quick look at the markets. SPX, just, you know, the markets, just, stocks just continue to march higher. Took just a slight pause, which is basically just flat sideways action with no range for a couple days and then ripped into new highs again. We've been talking about this for the last couple months that, you know, we thought the S&P, we thought stocks would just continue to climb ever since really after the election is when we've been talking about this. And as you can see, if you zoom out, just continued March, you had a couple of little blips here in the market, a couple, uh, you know, a little blip here, but then it's just kind of just on, on, on and on. And implied volatility has just gotten crushed. If we take a look at the VIX, uh, you can see we're now, if I zoom out here, I mean, you know, we're, we're approaching pre-pandemic levels in volatility. So volatility just absolutely getting sucked out of the market. And, uh, I, and I imagine it will continue to do so. A again, we may have some little blips, some little news stories, some little things come out. But I think we're going to, for the, at least the short term, we're going to continue higher. Now, uh, I have started adding a little bit of short delta. Uh, not 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 doing anything crazy, but I'll show you some of the trades that we that we added. Not adding any bunkers or any crash protection or hedge, you know, major hedge black swan type per, uh, protection at this point. Uh, but you know, this market is starting to get a little bit extended. I we saw a little bit of push up in implied volatility, even as the market was going up, uh, which which I thought might indicate a potential. You know, look at a, a at the market potentially starting to blow the top off, but uh, but it doesn't look that that way. I mean, it, the market just marched back up, and 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 volatility got crushed even more. So, just continuing to watch that, but we will start layering layering in some short delta. We're a little over one to one, almost two to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio, and part of that is just because we have a lot less theta on. We have a lot less premium because we haven't had the opportunities. So it's not that we've tried to get more short, but compared to our theta, we are a little bit more short at this point. Uh, all right, so that's the markets. If we take a look at, uh, that's the stock market. If we take a look at bonds, let's take a look at ZB. And ZB had this big slide and then for the last few weeks has really just continued to chop sideways and grind a little bit higher. With, uh, with interest rates stabilizing a little bit. But remember, if interest rates do start to march up again, you'll see the slide in bonds continue because of that inverse correlation. All right, so that's just a quick overview of what's going on in the markets. Um, taking a look at, you know, what, one thing I've been, I've been watching, and I haven't placed any trades in yet, but is the grains. I mean, if you look at soybeans, soybeans have, have been, uh, took a, a massive rip higher and they've just been kind of marching sideways for a while, but implied volatility, the options in there are very expensive. We don't do a lot in the grains just because of the commission structure. I mean, if you do a four-legged uh, trade like an iron condor, you know, you're talking about using 10 15% of your capital just to put that trade on. Uh, and I don't necessarily like to like to do naked trades in there either because of the substantial, you know, limit up and limit down situations you can find yourself in within those commodity products. But uh, we may we may look to potentially, you know, do a small position in ZS next week, just kind of watching it. Uh, it already has traded sideways for a while. So it may be looking to break out either up or down here. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. But the implied volatility options in there are very nice and expensive for for selling premium. So we'll take a look at that. And then oil, we did have a uh, an iron condor and oil that we took off for a nice profit, uh, but now, and I was waiting for implied volatility to potentially pop back up, but along with everything else, implied volatility got crushed uh, as oil has just kind of traded sideways recently. So, not much of an opportunity in there at this point. Uh, so let's we'll we'll jump into the alerts. Give you a quick update on our day trading. Had the best week that we've had day trading uh, going back to. September 14th, the week of September 14th uh, in 2020, uh, we had a big week of over 7,000 that week. This week, over $5,600, and this is our best week since then, which 
uh, on top of one of our worst weeks in a while last week. And last week's performance was specifically due to just a couple trades that I let get away and, and my position size was bigger than some of the other trades. And uh, so this week really refocused on just the discipline and, and following the rules and it paid off big. And that was just in four days. We didn't even day trade on Friday. So over $5,600 trading Monday through Thursday. Mighty 90s plus 887. And that puts us at almost 10,000 total on the Mighty 90 trades. Pairs trade, just did, just did two small trades, minus 84, uh, puts that us at a uh, little under 2,800 on the pairs. And then the runners, $4,800 on 16 trades. And, and the winning percentage is the big story here. Over 81% there on the mighty 90s, 80% win rate. Uh, so P&L on the runners gets us to over 47,000. Total, almost 60,000 on all our day trades. So Good stuff there. Continuing to have fun in the live stream room with all my day trading peeps. And uh, we'll be streaming live every day next week, Monday through Friday. So look forward to seeing you then. All right, let's move on to the alerts. Starting with Rut. Did a closing trade in Rut. We had an iron duck. Price ran higher. Uh, we booked a, uh, booked a bit over beak profit on that one. So took that one off for a winner. Uh, opening trade in SPX, so we added a weekly double calendar in SPX. We already had one in the same cycle, so we added one more. This one with four days in the front, seven in the back. And I'll get to SPX here because we already closed these out this week. SPY, Vertigo. So we put on a Vertigo last week. Uh, did this with 10 contracts. Got a really nice move with both implied volatility and price. And so we closed out six of our 10 contracts. Uh, so just taking some chips off the table, holding the remaining piece just to see if we can get some more. Sometimes I like to take around half, you know, 40, 50, 60% of the position on here. We just took off six of 10, so 60%. Book some profits, and, uh, and we'll go to that here in a second because we took off the rest here this week as well. JPM, so we did a pre-earnings long strangle. JP Morgan has been, well, let me get a chart to uh, give you the visual here. JPM has been trading pretty sideways uh, the last few weeks, and implied volatility has just absolutely been annihilated, of course, with the rest of the market. However, with earnings coming up, you would expect that we see a pop in implied volatility. Now, we have not seen that yet, uh, but looking for a potential price move and some uh, a spike in implied volatility going into earnings. Now, earnings is on 414 before market, so we'll be closing this out on the 13th, uh, and hopefully we get a little pop in implied volatility or a little pop in price, either up or down, uh, to uh, potentially book a profit here. See, we're down slightly on here because implied volatility has still just continued to, to contract, even leading up to earnings, which is interesting because that's not very normal, but we'll see if we can get a pop here and uh, sneak out a profit before we have to close this one before earnings. Starbucks, uh, closing adjusting trade. So we had a a long call diagonal, just a bullish play in in Starbucks, trying to ride this momentum of the market going higher. Uh, Starbucks got a really nice pop higher. We closed out uh, half of it, half of our contracts for over a 60% profit on this, and we're holding our remaining piece. Now, I know Starbucks has come down since then, but we're still up. Well, let's see, we've got 164 of risk. Uh, so we're pretty close to uh, to where we took that that other half off, and if we can get another little pop higher in Starbucks into this week, uh, we'll be in good shape. So we, as Starbucks popped up and started consolidating here, we put put this trade on right here, popped up, we took off half, it's consolidating again. If we get another pop up, we'll take the other half off for a nice profit as well. SPY closing trade. So this was the remaining four contracts that we closed in that SPY vertigo. So booked a really nice profit on that in just a few days. DIA rolling adjusting trade. So this is a, a short call vertical in DIA. We just rolled it out from April to May, adjusted our strikes accordingly. And this is one of those positions we're just keeping on for that short delta exposure. So if we take a look at DIA, you can see price is pretty close to the break even right now. Just holding that for some downside to benefit that piece uh, if we if the market does start to turn. Baidu, uh, long put diagonal. So here's one of the short delta plays that we that we put on. We did this one with uh, 23 days in the front week, 30 in the back, and we're just looking for some downside action. 
Uh, Baidu and Baba, these Chinese stocks have been pretty weak. So we're trying to get, get short the, some of the weaker stocks on the board. And we'll stay long some of the stronger ones and, uh, and play it that way. So you can see, you know, even with the market ripping a new all-time highs, Baidu has shown some weakness, tried to bounce, shown some weakness, bounced again. So we're seeing if we can get one more, one more flush lower to, uh, to benefit this. So you can see we're already up a little bit on the trade from when we put it on and just looking for a little bit of downside to uh, try to book, you know, somewhere 50, 100% of, of, uh, of buying power. So we've got about $458 of risk. So we'd like to book around that in profits as well if we get a little bit of a down move. Lulu, same thing, added as a short uh, position in Lulu. Again, using the long put diagonal, same expiration, 23 days in the front, 30 in the back. So if we take a look at Lulu, uh, you can see Lulu's actually moved higher on us since we put this on. Uh, but again, Lulu's been pretty weak. Uh, came out with earnings, showed some weakness after earnings. Uh, when it bounced up, we were looking for a potential rollover. It has moved higher on us since then. But we'll uh, we'll see if we get some downside move. It's still kind of at the top of this consolidation area. If it starts to break out, we might just close it. Uh, but we'll see. We've got some time, so we'll see if we can get some uh, get some profits out of Lulu. Rut Iron Duck. So we opened up a new Rut Iron Duck with uh, with prices moving lower on this day on April seventh. Uh, put on a duck with fourteen days to expiration. So if we take a look at Rut. So you can see as the S&P is continuing to hit new all-time highs, along with the Dow, the Russell hit it back on the 15th of March, uh, but has not been able to regain that strength. So I uh, had this little push lower, so we put on an iron duck right here. And you can see where, where uh, price has moved a little bit higher since then. So we're up a little bit on that trade, but still a good chance to come back into the max profit area. So holding that for now. SPX closing trade. So here's one of our uh, iron, uh, excuse me, weekly double calendars and SPX that we that we had on. Uh, this was on Thursday with one DTE. So we went ahead and closed this one, uh, booked a profit on this one, and then the very next trade we closed our other one. So we had two on, closed both. The you know we just had a, a P and L tent was really sagging. Assumed we were going to get some further, uh, you know. Um, uh, volatility contraction on Friday, which in fact we did. So it was a good exit. So one of them was a winner. One of them was a loser. Uh, so we were out of those. And then we went ahead and put on another one for the next week. So this one with seven DTE in the front, 11 DTE in the back. Remember these front week options are the AM expiration options, which I always note in the comments here, uh, which just means they, uh, uh expire in the first thing in the morning, not, uh, after the market closes. So if we take a look at that one, bring this up here a little bit. So this is our iron duck. Click off that. So you can see we're up uh, almost a hundred, yeah, a little over a hundred dollars on this. So just looking for price to kind of stay in this range. Maybe get a little pop in implied volatility. And it doesn't take much on these on these double calendars, double diagonals. Doesn't take a lot of a pop of, of an implied volatility. If we just get a little bit moved down, a little pop pop in IV, uh, it'll really help the profit of this. So we'll see what happens into next week. And then we've also, while we're here, we've got an iron duck in SPX. That is still, is way up the beak. So we tried to close this out. This expires on the 15th. So if we can't get filled for under $5, just to book that beak profit of 120, We'll just let it expire, but we'll try to we'll try to manage out of that one next week and just close it out early, redeploy that capital into another high probability trade. Uh, XLK, this is one of our another one of our short delta plays. This is a long put vertical. Just rolled this out from April to May, and extending duration, keeping that short delta exposure in our portfolio is pretty close to where we put it on. Just looking for some downside to benefit that. SPY, so we opened up a new vertigo. This one was seven and ten days. Uh, so if you take a look at SPY, click off some of these theoreticals. So you can see uh, implied volatility did pop up slightly from where we put this on. So we just need a, a big move up or a big move down. Uh, did eight contracts on this one, a little bit wider. So we've got you know potential to book five, six hundred dollars on this if we can get a decent move in either direction. And then lastly, we had a couple of 
stragglers on. We had a from a, a long call diagonal. We had we had our remaining uh, long calls left, so we just let those expire. And then in DK and G, uh, long call diagonal had some remaining long calls that we just let those expire as well. So we we're out of those. So those are all the positions. Uh, excuse me. Those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of these other positions. Starting with ES, so we've got this long put vertical. We'll be rolling this next week. It's way out of range with the up movement in stocks. You can see we've got 19 days to expiration, so we'll, we'll roll this out here in the next couple weeks uh, out to extend duration and keep that as a short delta piece. Uh, ZB, we've still got this short strangle. It's got 40 days left to expiration that we've been managing. You can see it's dead centered. We're up a couple hundred bucks since our last roll. Apple, another short delta piece that has uh, pushed higher with the rest of the market. So looking for some downside to get back into range there. This one is out in May, so not looking to roll yet. Baba, another one of our short positions here. This is another uh, long put diagonal. Price is right here, just looking for a little bit of downside to benefit that. I already mentioned Baidu. DE, uh, another one of our short delta plays, just outside of range, looking for some downside to get back in there. DIA I mentioned, IWM, same thing. This is a long put, dia uh, long put vertical, looking for some downside to get back into range there. I mentioned JPM, Lulu, QQQ. Uh, with this, I mean, with this big move up in the market, you know, this NASDAQ as well had a big move up, almost hit a new all-time high, just under it in the QQQs. Let's see, did NDX hit it? No, nope. yeah, just under it there as well. So, uh, I mean, with that with that kind of an explosive move, you're going to obviously bust out of the range of some of your short delta plays here, which is what happened. Mentioned RUT, mentioned uh, S Bucks, SMH, semiconductors. So we've got this short strangle that we've adjusted into a straddle. Price is just hanging out here in the upper end of the range. Could use a little downside to get back into the center there. Mentioned SPX, SPY, and XLK. So. Those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a good rest of your Sunday, and we will see you Monday. We'll be streaming live in, in the day trading, Monday through Friday, and, uh, and we'll be in the community as well. So look forward to seeing you then. Take care.